guys! If you watched my last video, you will probably be interested to know do I actually film my videos in bulk? Well, yes, I have the same eyeshadow on, the same nails, the same outfit because I know I said in that video I changed my outfit, but I couldn't be bothered and I just changed my lipstick. Hey! Um, but yes, I have just finished my research for this video and it is going to be fun! <laughs> Let's get started. So before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I'm really into that saying at the moment, I wanted to give a bit of backstory about me so you can understand why I'm talking about this and why I think my opinion matters really, I guess. So hello, I'm Shona. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll love you to do that. I'm 25 and this time last year, so April of 2020, I started a weight loss journey. I was at my heaviest, I wasn't happy, and in that time too, now I'm filming, which is the 25th of April, I have lost two stone and two pounds in just over a year. So for me, my weight loss journey was all about self-control, it was about eating right, cooking, having less stress, and exercise was a part of it obviously, but especially in the last four months of my journey, I haven't exercised at all because the gyms were shut and I couldn't be bothered to go running. So I did try and do Couch to 5k for Lent and gave that up pretty quickly because I just couldn't be bothered. So while there has been exercise incorporated, most of it was down to food. And if you wonder about weight loss, it is literally calories in versus calories out how much energy are you burning, obviously if you're exercising more you can eat more because duh, but it's all about being in a calorie deficit and if anyone tries to tell you different, they're wrong. So I wanted to talk to you today about weight loss groups because while I'm sure they've done some wonderful things and I'm sure they've helped plenty of people, there are a lot of issues with them that I want to address as someone who hasn't had a personal trainer, hasn't had a nutritionist, has been eating things that I think are perfectly fine for me and are giving me the weight loss that I want and yeah, I just have a lot of issues with them. So let's just get right into it. For a disclaimer, I will not be naming any of the weight loss groups that I have been looking at. I have compiled some notes and so I will be talking about certain things that I have found out that they have said themselves through their website, through whatever, but I am not actually going to name them because I don't want to be done for slander, even though I don't think it is slander, it's just research. So weight loss groups, what are they? Basically when you're a person who wants to lose some weight, you can either go about it yourself like I did or you can find personal trainers or nutritionists, whatever, you know, like the body coach does. He has apps that tell you what to eat, how to exercise, what exercises would be good for you. If you're an older person who has like weaker joints or something, or you've had an injury, you can do like less impact um, exercise rather than high impact exercise for someone who hasn't had an injury or is a bit fitter than like some people, you know, like there's lots of choice there. And so that can help you stir in the right direction or you can go down the weight loss group thing. <laughs> the weight loss group route. And that's what I'm looking at today because I, uh, a while ago, fell down a hole of weight loss groups on Instagram. I don't really know how I got there, but a lot of people do like to use Instagram to connect with others and to share their experience, how they're getting on their food. Instagram's a great place because you can put up pretty pictures of your food and be like, I ate this. And as I was looking through those pages, I was quite shocked at what I, was saw, or what I saw and what advice they were being given from these groups. So I wanted to jump in here and talk about it. So I've rambled on enough, so let's just, let's just get into it. So the first issue I have with these weight loss groups, and this isn't just a one weight loss group thing, it seems to be quite universal, is they don't look at calories, they look at a point system. So with my fitness pal, which is what I use to track my calories, I'm able to see what um, I'm eating, what calories are in it, I'm able to plan my day um, and look at my macros as well. So protein is a big one for me at the moment, going back to the gym. So I want to be hitting my protein goals and so I'm able to see if I don't just have a salad but I add some corn pieces to it or I add a vanilla protein shake into my day, you know, like little things like that I can see will boost it up. And so looking at calories is really helpful because 
calories are what are on the actual ingredients of food. If you look at the ingredients list and the nutritional information, it's in calories because it would be. It's like, duh. But however, these groups look at it as a point system. So certain foods have more points than other foods do and you only get a certain amount of points in the day. So say you had 10 points. I have no idea what that means because I've never done it that way. But say you had 10 points and a chocolate bar is worth say three of those points. And so then you've only got seven points left. And so you've got to work out what you can eat off that point system. Now it's very similar to calories, but you don't actually get to see the calorie side of things if you do it that way because obviously you're just looking at point systems and some of the ways that these point systems work it seems insane to me. So for example, I've just had a Google because I thought, let's look into this, shall we? Like, let's actually, like I've got some notes, but let's look into it properly. My favorite snack of choice is a galaxy bar. It's about this big, a little galaxy bar. It gets six pieces in it. And I find that really nice and an easy quick snack to have that is only 120 calories so 120 calories isn't that many for some bars like double deckers are like 250 because they've got all the nougat and the biscuits like it there's a lot more to it whereas galaxy is literally just chocolate freddo is a great um snack if you want a low calorie chocolate but i've just googled and on a certain group um in terms of the point system a galaxy bar is 12 and a half points. So according to Google again, the average points you get on this particular group that is giving the Galaxy Bar 12 and a half points is 15. You get 15 points a day and a Galaxy Bar, 120 calories, is 12 and a half of them. Does that make sense to you? 120 calories, 12 and a half points out of 15 points. That's insane. That's insane. What else are you meant to eat? But <laughs> coming from that, this is where it gets interesting. So um, a few of these groups I've looked at have things called free food. So food that has no points. Like you can eat as much as you want and it's absolutely fine. It has no points at all. The items that are included in the free food area, the ones that you can eat in an abundance. And it said on their website, you don't have to, well, I will quote it. Hundreds of everyday foods you can eat without counting, without weighing or measuring, and without a shred of guilt. So you can eat as much of this throughout the day and it's perfectly fine, right? Just remember, 12 and a half points out of 15 for 120 calories of a Galaxy Bar versus no, like, points or anything for these foods. Now some make sense. Vegetables and lean meat and fish, sure because they have good nutrients and if you look, and vitamins, and if you look at the calorie content of certain things like vegetables, they're very low. My family find it insane that I eat half a cucumber with my salad. I get a whole cucumber and I eat half of it and then I'll have half later on in the week. But they find it mental, like they're like, how do you eat so much cucumber? According to my fitness pal, the one that I use, half a cucumber is six calories because it's mainly water, you know? Half a cucumber, six calories. A cup of spinach, like a handful of spinach, seven. It's so easy to have such low calorie meals with vegetables and stuff like that because it's so full of water, like it's so low calorie anyway. And so for that, for the meat, fish and vegetables, I get it because that's not gonna have a load of calories in it anyway. However, it also includes pasta and potatoes. I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. So a galaxy bar is 12 and a half points out of 15 for your day, because that's the average you get, most people get, but 120 calories, but pasta. So I only have whole wheat pasta and I have 75 grams of pasta with my dinner um, on average. And that is mid range around 100 and something calories. It's not over 200 calories. It's the lower range of 100 calories but I can have that in abundance. And the thing is, with these free foods, which are lean meat, eggs, fish, potatoes, fruit and vegetables and pasta, if I only, if we forget about sauce for a minute, apart from maybe, so, right, 120 calories, I'm going off, I'm sorry, this is a huge thing for me. 120 calories, 12 and a half points out of 15. But for dinner, for example, I could have a 
I'm gonna go insane with this. I'm sorry, I'm the person at school that bought 12 watermelons. I could have a kilo of pasta with a kilo of chicken, lean chicken. And because vegetables, and I'm certain water is, vegetables are free food as well, I could make out of um, a bunch of big tomatoes for example and water and just adding a few herbs and stuff to make it taste nice but even that like you don't need that like do it like the white person way like just have tomatoes and water and mush it up into a sauce that could be dinner <laughs> and that's and that's perfectly fine what <laughs> i'm sorry that is insane a 120 calorie galaxy bar nearly takes up all of my daily allowance. 120 calories, yet yeah. a huge pot of pasta and chicken and some horrific amalgamation of tomato and water for a sauce. So a tomato sauce chicken pasta is perfectly fine. I can eat as much of that as I want because it's free food. How does that make sense? How does that make sense? And my biggest issue with this as well, not just how insane it is, is how that can skew your thoughts of food. Now, some people look at calorie counting and think that's not the best way because you can get a bit obsessed with the numbers and stuff. But for me, it worked. You know, I've lost two and two pounds in a year, you know, two stone and two pounds in a year. Like it's worked for me. And so if I tried to join one of these groups and do it their way, I know me at my biggest would have just eaten pasta and lean meat. And also, they do healthy extras, right? And healthy extras, which I found on Instagram, is because it has certain uh, extras in it, like calcium or healthy fats, you can have it and it's chill. Now, obviously, these you can't have as much as the free foods, but you can still add it in. These include milk and cheese for calcium, wholemeal bread and breakfast cereals for fibre, and other essential minerals and nuts and seeds for healthy oils. Now nuts, if you actually look at nuts, now I do a lot of my recipes from BBC Good Food, I've talked about them before, and they add in nuts into their recipes, recipes because they taste good. I always have to take the nuts out because they don't fit in my calories because nuts are so calorific. It's quite shocking how, like Google it. Google, I'm gonna do it now, how many, calories are in 100 grams of peanuts. 567 calories in 100 grams of peanuts. That's insane. Like if you were on your 2000 a day government guideline for women, that'd be a quarter of your day just on 100 grams of peanuts. Mental. And so for them to say, oh, it's healthy extra, it's not that healthy in terms of calories and calories are the important thing here. I said, Wholemeal bread, sure, it'll fill you up more, but like, do you eat it dry? I'm assuming, I mean, you, you, is butter a calcium? Is butter a carb? You know, like, breakfast cereal, sure. But then again, like, this is a balanced one, so that's fine. And yeah, milk and cheese. But like, it's insane how skewed they make it. So processed food, which has low calorie, it may not be the best for you inside. It's fine for you when you're losing weight because it's less calories versus just a huge bowl of like pasta and potatoes and meat and veg is insane. You know, like you could easily go over your calorie limit with that, with one meal, and then you're freaking out over 120 calories over here. Like make it make sense, that makes no sense. And I feel, especially for me, and especially for the people around me that I've seen that have talked about me about their weight and stuff, it's about portion control. They are eating the right stuff, but they're just eating too much of it. And if they can have an abundance of pasta, what makes you think they're gonna go from them being like, oh, I'll have a like bowl this size to a bowl this size. They're not gonna do that. It's free food. They can eat as much as they want, so they're gonna stick to a bowl that size. These are the things that you need to tell people if they're coming to you about portion control and about stuff like that. And based on their website, they don't get into that. Like they talk about controlling certain aspects of food, like the points with chocolate and crisps and stuff, but having an abundance of pasta and potatoes, what do they mean by potatoes? You know, can I just eat chips the whole time? Like, is that fine? And yes, on their website, they show healthy, nutritious meals, but they're going to because that's what 
they're going to push out to make people join. But that doesn't mean that Sandra at home is actually doing that. But no, I just find that insane. And I'm gonna move on from that because that's like 20 minutes of me just rambling about calories. They put a lot of emphasis on needing exercise to lose weight. You don't need exercise to lose weight. As I said at the start, it's calories in versus calories out. The more calories you burn, the more you can eat. But if you are in a calorie deficit for your like lowest level where you're just lying in bed all day and doing nothing, you can do that. You know, it's not recommended obviously, but you can do that. So you don't need exercise. And whenever I talk to people and I say to them, oh yeah, I lost like, I don't know, five pounds this, this, these last like few months. And they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I haven't exercised. I've just eaten better. And they're like, what? And it's like, yeah, because it's so ingrained in people that you need to exercise to lose weight. You don't, you know? My main exercise back then was going to the shop every Saturday for my food, you know? Like, you don't need to exercise. It's great to do it, but you don't need it. And they put a lot of emphasis on needing it to lose weight when it's just about the food and it seems their food side isn't good anyway. I also want to talk about the group aspect. Groups can be a blessing and a curse. So they had some testimonials from certain people who have obviously done really well on the programme. And if you, post lockdown and all this, if you went to groups to weigh yourself and stuff, if you had gained weight or you hadn't lost as much as other people, you'd feel pretty rubbish about yourself. I'd feel pretty rubbish about myself. I'd be like, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not losing weight like they are? But they might be like, have great metabolisms or they might weigh more than you, which means they don't need to do as much to lose as much, if that makes sense. Like I have to eat an X amount of calories, but if someone double my size ate the same calories as me, their weight would drop so much quicker because it's a bigger change for them. Whereas for me, it's not. And so while it's great to big yourself up and other people can make you feel great and you're all a big happy family, there's always gonna be that disdain against certain people thinking, why did they lose that weight and I didn't? Why did they do so well and I didn't? And I think that can be quite sad really you think you it's an internal battle with yourself you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anyone else but i feel in a group setting especially for me i would and it would just make me feel worse and if i feel worse i'm not gonna do well you know like it's a ever never-ending cycle and so i looked at some of the testimonies so i looked at two people who were on the same plan so i could compare and contrast so there was a guy who lost 10 and a half stone in just over a year right that's insane that's insane if he was consistent with that um over that just over a year he would have lost two and a half pounds a week two and a half pounds a week now this website says that you should expect to lose one to two so he was an overachiever in his weight loss and that's insane to me that someone can lose two and a half pounds consistently now of course maybe he didn't maybe some weeks he had more takeaways maybe some weeks he drank alcohol with his friends you know like he might have done other things differently but that's a big number. I lose on average, I think it's like half a pound to a pound a week, which is great. Like that's great progress. And I've been able to keep up consistently. But two and a half pounds seems insane to me. And then we had a woman. So he was a man and she's a woman. And she lost five stone in a year and four months. So about a year and a half. So she lost it five stone in a longer time than he lost his 10 and a half stone and she lost a pound a week consistently, which is much more expected. And so to look at this and go on the website and think, wow, I could lose 10 stone in just over a year. That's insane, that's great. And then you don't. That made me feel pretty rubbish as well. Like, why did they do so well and I didn't? But you don't actually get to know too much about these people. Like you get a bit of a testimony and like, I feel so much better, but you don't actually get to dive into what they actually did because it might not work for you, which is fair enough, but you shouldn't, as I said, compare yourself to others because that'll just be a slippery slope. But the thing with these two people is they paid for the most expensive subscription, I guess. Um, so on the websites that I looked at, one was from just five pounds a week. So that's if it's a four week month, that's 20 pounds a month. And the other that I looked at was from 14.95 a month. So that one's five pounds cheaper, but that was the cheapest plan. Now, the plan that these two people were on was on the £22.95 a month plans. So if we took into account the time they spent, 
The guy to lose 10 stone 8 spent over, just over 300 quid. And the woman who lost 5 stone in a year and 4 months spent over 360. Which is insane to me because all you're getting out of that is things you can find free on the internet. It's like anything really, like any sort of workout program and stuff. They're all on the internet. Now, of course, if you need someone to like kick you at the butt and keep you like in check and make sure that you're doing what you're doing, then sure, it could be great for you. But you don't need to spend that money. You're not buying, you're not getting any perks for doing that. You can look up healthy recipes online that include the calories and the content of it, like fat, protein, sugar, all that. You can look up workouts online. You can look up meal plans. You can print out like sheets of meal plans or buy them from Amazon and fill in what you're eating each day. There's apps for it. You know, like there's so many areas that are free that you don't need to spend this money on. And the only thing you're getting from this that you won't get from that stuff is the community, and like I said, that can be bad and good. You don't need to spend this amount of money, money to lose this weight because you're not getting a discount on the food. You're not getting a discount on a gym membership. You're not getting a discount on buying weights. You're getting a community to keep you going. But then what if you become reliant on them and then you can't keep going or something or something comes up and then you're just gonna fall off again. You know, like, it's all about the long-term planning and I feel that there's not a lot of planning here because it's about the now and it will completely like looking at this and the pastas and the potatoes and all that that would completely ruin my mindset on food you know like i that would make no sense to me i can't wrap my head around that that's insane and so and another thing i noticed which isn't true for this man and woman here but on the other website i looked at they didn't give the start and end dates so they'd be like kathy lost seven stone during her time with us but won't let you know how long it took her and so it's like, okay, she lost seven stone. That's incredible. But if it took her 10 years, is that really that great to shout about? And the final thing I want to talk about with this is I took their test. They have a little, see how we can help you test. So I took it. I still have it open. I've got my results. I feel so blessed. But one question really concerned me. And this goes back to the food side. And the question was, do you have a lot of sugary drinks, crisps, biscuits, sweets, etc. in your house? I answered yes, because I do. I have a whole cupboard full of sweet treats. I've got a party pack of Jaffa cakes. I've got a sharing bag of um, the new dairy milk orange buttons. I've got two share, um, multi-pack bags of frazzles. I've got all my protein in there. I've got some galaxy in there, my 12 and a half point galaxy. Um, and I've got, I mean, it's right here. I don't want to pick it up because it's heavy, but right next to me on this sofa right now, I have a 30 case can of Coke Zero. Now that doesn't count as a sugary drink, obviously, but it still counts as a fizzy drink. And so for them to ask that and for me to go, yeah, I have that. And then they're like, mm, you need help. It's like, no. <laughs> It's all about self-discipline. Just because I have sugary things in my house doesn't mean I'm gaining weight or I'm overweight or whatever, you know? Like, I can eat crisps, I can eat chocolate every day and still lose weight because it's in my calories, you know? Like, it's perfectly fine. And for them to include a question like that and make it seem like it's the end of the world because I have some crisps in my cupboard, oh God, like, oh, it's, it's terrible. Like, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's insane. And so I got my results. I put in as well. So right now I'm at a certain weight, which if you look at the BMI is a healthy weight. So right now, technically, I don't need to lose any more weight. I want to lose more weight, but I don't need to. However, on here, it doesn't say like, oh, you're at a healthy weight. You don't need to lose weight or ah, oh, like for your height and your weight, you're okay. It's just like, we can help you, <laughs> which seems weird to me because say you were a healthy weight but at the lower end of healthy on the bmi scale and you put your stuff in here saying you wanted to lose more weight would they say don't like i really wonder about that like would they say don't lose any more weight because their whole thing the whole way of making money is to make help people lose weight and so if someone wants to lose weight but they're already at their lowest weight should they really lose any more you know that's not healthy and then it just gives you information 
that is literally cookie cutter of what's on their website already like it's not that exciting and it's just like look at the memberships and it's like what did I just get out of doing that like quiz nothing because everything you said is everything you'd say to everyone else so even if I said oh no my exercise is great but I eat like rubbish you'd be like take this okay well my exercise is rubbish but I eat great take this you know there'd be no difference and so that makes no sense to me and so I don't get how this is over I just don't get it and it annoys me so what I want to say to you is you do not need weight loss groups to lose weight you do not need to put money into this to lose weight there are so many tools out there to help you if you want to lose weight there are people you can talk to who won't charge this much to help you to lose weight there's so many options in this day and age with the internet and with online groups and stuff like you could join an online weight loss group and never pay a penny and get the same sort of response that you get from this you know like you do not need to pay money to have people support you you can find people who are like-minded like you to support you and you can support them too you know like there's options and I just think it's ridiculous how they make food sound like it's terrible when it's not you know they make chocolate the enemy when it's not the enemy and the enemy is overeating and if you have an abundance of pasta and potatoes you're going to overeat my 120 calorie galaxy bar is going to be a lot better than a big dinner of over portioned pasta you know you need to teach people better and what I'm getting from the website especially if I didn't want to sign up I just want to see what they did and try and incorporate it into what I do would completely skew my my way of looking at things I doubt I would have lost any weight if I went down this route because it's just so skewed and so if you want to lose weight go online and find videos like ones I've done, find videos from other people, you know, you can find stuff out there, find free workouts on YouTube if you want to work out at home, you know, the body coach, as I said already, he does have his app, but he also does free stuff too, so even if you are to do that and just buy his recipe books, like one off, you can do that, you know, like there's so many options, you don't need to join groups that will skew what food is and completely ruin your thoughts on it, you know, that's my biggest worry, I don't want there to be food fear, I want people to embrace food and embrace different food and not be scared of any food. I eat bread, I have share bags of crisps, you know, like it all fits together and I'm still losing weight. But yeah, this was a proper ranty long video so I apologise for that but I hope you learnt something from it, I hope you got something from it. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this. And I will see you next time. Bye.